my statement of research. Yeah, I'm going to show you guys my statement of research interest, uh, which I wrote and I took help from some online resources while carving this out. You might find similar somewhere else too, but uh, there was no plagiarism in this one. I worked a lot. I changed it a lot. Guys, I would suggest you guys to keep it very simple. Only three areas. Research areas and approach in, in this one, you mentioned that who are you, what are you working on and um, what is your aim? That's all. And then you get in detail. Previous research experience. What I did was I worked with molecular biosurveillance of extended spectrum beta lectomies for Salmonella E. coli in multiple avian species, which was at human animal interface. So again, I mentioned in detail what I did during this project. This paragraph is all focused about this project, what I did. And if you've done more than one project, then you should mention more than one project on this one. But again, mention only those projects that are related to that professor to whom you are sending this. I was sending this to a professor. He was also in Canada. Uh, he was working on the same, uh, same enzyme and same stuff. So I wrote only this project in my uh experience i did not bombard my document with everything i've done i wrote only what i needed to show him uh, yes you are working on e coli you are working on esbl i've done this work before look at me look at look at my esbl work that's all i did not want to show him that i did some work on rabies i did some he's not interested then you have to show tell them what are your future research directions and what I did was I used again the similar words antimicrobial resistance in food products environment and animals this is mentioned at his profiles uh, profile guys like I showed you before I used these words then what I did was uh, how AMR resistance flows in the environment he, he was working on this one then uh, yeah he's more uh, uh, animal, humans, and environment under the umbrella of One Health. Then again, at the end, the main motivation here is to probe the bacteria world to look for novel strategies to what the future silent pandemic. He loved this word, silent pandemic, because uh, when I was looking at his profile, he was using this word a lot, silent pandemic, silent pandemic. So this was the last word he will look at when he will read this document. Just uh, put your, uh, yourself in his shoes uh, and like a student is sending you something and you usually look more like uh, at these lines, at uh, these lines, and then you will go to the end and then you will go, okay, 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 silent pandemic, okay. So this was a whole statement of research interest. If somebody wants to uh, have a detailed look, you can just go to Hamza's YouTube and you can pause the video and you can have a look. What else I need to share, Hamza? Yes, thanks for sharing it. So would you please share your resume, cover letter, uh, email structure for supervisors? With yeah, you? I, I can share an email. I can share an email. Right. I would, uh, let just give me one, one minute, please. What I need to do is, yeah, I need to share an email. I can, you can see my screen. Sorry, I'm just seeing your um, previous document. SOP? Yes. SOP, that's cool, because I want to, I don't want to share. Okay. <laughs> you are playing with us. <laughs> no, uh, guys, keep your privacy. Don't tell everything to everyone. Yes, especially nowadays to Pakistanis. <laughs> nah, never, to, never to Pakistanis. Stay yeah. aware of Pakistanis. I'm sorry I have to say this, but... <laughs> because they are wet. Like, that's why we are here to help them. We trust them. And I'm trust. I'm sure one day your own CV-like document will be uh, in inside Allah. your professor's Hamza, email. You, in books. Really? Hamza, <laughs> you... But guys, I'm saying, I'm, I'm telling you guys that I've sent this kind of uh, statement of research interest to hundreds of professors around the globe. So if you are copying this, <laughs> they know, <laughs> they know it. 
So, yeah, and some sometimes they deposit these files in their Tarantine repository. So if you will submit and they're interested in you, they will put in Tarantine. It yeah. will show 100% to other student document and it is big no to your profile. Yes. Now you get... Okay, I can show you. I can show you my screen now. Okay. Mm, this one. This was an email I sent to the same professor. I showed you this statement of research interest. You can Sorry. see my screen? Sorry, still no. Uh, yeah, now you can see. Mm -hmm. No. Okay. Uh, no. Uh, Your uh, Google Doc is open. Yes. Yeah. Perfect. What I did was this. Uh, this is the email I sent, and this is the same same document I was showing you guys. This was the email. Dear Doctor, this this this. Please give rings. Simply three paragraphs only. Don't mention anything which you have in your CV. You don't need to mention here. You just need to mention one major thing which can lead them to your documents. You just need to show uh, show them that. That's all. And always, if you've done IELTS or you've not done with IELTS, always write this. I am going to appear in my IELTS exam soon. Always write this, guys. Okay. They will ask if they reply you, if they're interested in you. And they. this is also a smart strategy. If they, they're interested in you, they will send you an email. Okay. Yes, we are in. Uh, we can work together. And when are you going to appear in your IELTS? Because they will ask about IELTS only if they want you to get admission to the university. If they want to hire you, if you want to keep, they want you to in their group. So uh, you can just tell them, yeah, I'm taking it next in next 20 days. And you can just do that right away. Uh, always mention this in your emails. Then write about basic knowledge of these. And th this is a smart line I would suggest to you guys because we all have the basic knowledge. You watch two or three YouTube videos and you have the basic knowledge. That's all. But at least they will have an idea that Dr. Joseph will have an idea that you know about R and Python and you will stand out. Then you have to tell them that you can survive between these guys. If you are an extremist, Canada is not for you. US is not for you. Stay in Pakistan or stay wherever you are. Okay, the, the, this is the email. You can you can have a look and you can ask me questions later. I can show this again. Yeah. What else I need to show? Um, your resume, cover letter, like that. Oh uh, yeah, I never uh, Hamza. I'll be honest. I never wrote a cover letter. I never sent a cover letter to anyone. Okay. Yeah. Before I give you, I always <laughs> sent these the three. Uh, this statement of research interest. Like, I was lucky enough. Maybe Allah was very generous for, for me. Like. I applied only at three positions and I was selected for two of them. One was in US and one was in Canada and I preferred Canada. And I never write any statement of, uh, I never write any statement of purpose, personal statement for Canada. You, wrote, wrote, uh, you wrote a very good statement of purpose for your Canadian visa. You have it your, <laughs> at your YouTube channel and it really saved me when I was applying for visa. Really? I, I went to your YouTube channel and I was like, oh okay, God. Well, this yeah. <laughs> oh my God. So I am I am the only person from veterinary background who has uh, some content on social media. I deleted a lot yeah. of data because data was in, in Urdu and then I shifted to English. So I have to upload again uh, visa details, but I am worried Pakistanis will get afraid when they will say, when they will see those visa details. So I'm <laughs> hiding it until one to two, one year more. <laughs> Yeah, it's good. But about that SOP video you have at your YouTube channel, it saved me. I, I still remember it was April when I was applying for my visa mm -hmm. and I was in Pakistan. I was like, how do I how do I write that statement of research interest? And I wrote a statement of research interest. It was a six, sorry, statement of purpose. It was six uh, pages long. You, you can't imagine. <laughs> but I got the visa. I got the visa in 20, 25 mm -hmm. days. Yeah. Oh, nice. Yeah. And by the way, I wrote a personal statement or statement of interest for University of uh, Torino for in Italy and uh, University of Kiel in Germany. I wrote for them 
so in future whenever i get a chance i will share them yeah okay. why not you should okay uh, where is where is my presentation window so your presentation window is open but you should go to your documents like yeah. resume please okay yeah i can show my resume sorry guys this resume is not very uh, hamza i would not like to show i'm very sorry uh, it's okay but i would suggest you like before coming to canada we d we don't know so much about these documents now we know we feel shame i know i agree but still you can show and you i you no i'm not ashamed guys never be ashamed of yourself <laughs> i am not ashamed i just don't want yeah. you guys to uh, uh okay now you can see i i just don't want you guys to okay. think that this is perfect i have yeah. a lot of mistakes okay. in this cv <laughs> this looks like my cv <laughs> yeah it's okay no problem okay yeah, guys I, you can scroll down <laughs> yeah i can tell you i got this cv template from vakar beg vakar beg is uh, very well known you know him uh, he is like running a facebook group he uploaded the cv in a facebook group i got this template and i just changed it according to my interest Yeah, this is Europass format. Yeah, I like, know. I this is Europass, but this is uh, a little bit. Uh, I I made modified. a little bit changes. Yeah, a little bit modified. Yeah. So what I did this was education and training. Then I mentioned my work experience. You can just show in a smooth flow. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I wrote the major. Ah, uh, guys, note this. I wrote only those subjects where I was applying to. Uh, because i i didn't mention any kind of uh, preventive medicine surgery or something like that because i was more into one health stuff so i mentioned more about this pathobiology and veterinary medicine because wherever you are you are a veterinarian so on that then i mentioned about my uh, okay this was this experience i had in 2020 Uh, yeah in 2020 and this was after that but i mentioned it before because this was the most related to that professor so i mentioned it then after that i mentioned my publications i was so dumb i wrote my extension articles whatever i did i mentioned here because i had this only <laughs> so this was my publication stuff in conference abstracts then extension articles then there was an oral presentation i still don't have its certificate if mohammad bakhsh is listening to me mohammad bakhsh please send me the certificate <laughs> ivsa has its own style so oh yeah <laughs> <laughs> then I, yeah coursera helped me i did some courses from coursera uh, guys there is not only coursera you just go to world health organization and they offer really good courses for one health So if you guys are interested in one health you should go to WHO and this is free like you can do those courses it it helped me a lot and they are very good like you get, uh, get a lot of new and uh, interesting knowledge then there is a universitas bravijaya uh, they can accept everyone who applies to them okay guys get benefit from this university the next time they launched their virtual international student exchange everyone who applied get, got accepted i was also accepted and it helped me like they still uh, i was talking to my supervisor and he was like oh yeah you you had an international experience before i was like yeah and i did nothing during this student exchange thing but i got the certificate yeah and they are also offering beef a beef a course on beef nowadays they have closed the registrations but every year they offered something for students yeah and this like yeah, almost they, everyone yeah they are really, really good you can you can get accepted there okay this is when i what i mentioned technical skills then tools guys this part work on this one too you should know some tools and then after that i have my references that's all this is my cv um Okay. I think we should take some questions because guy, uh, people have a lot of questions. Okay, so thank you. 
Jangir for doing everything for Vets community, for taking a, for taking some time. Anyway, so here is 12 a.m. midnight in Canada. <laughs> Yeah, and uh, in the morning I had a session there. We talked a lot about CV. So just bef- uh, last recording which I uploaded, if you will go to that recording, you will see a lot of details about CV. How we can improve CV by a girl. She's in extern. She's on externship in Canada. So for more details about CV, just uh, see that. Anyway, so please raise your hands if you want to ask a question. And if you want, I should ask on your behalf. Just put your question in comments and write, ask on my behalf. Then I will ask on your behalf. So, okay. So, Fizan, your hand is, um, I am unmuting you. Please ask your question. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam. Fizan, can you hear me? Okay, my question uh, is uh, basically I'm doing DVM from the university. Yes, I can hear you. Am I audible to you? Yeah, yeah, you are. Okay, I'm uh, I'm a student of DVM from University of Agriculture, Faisalabad. Uh, currently, I have done eighth semester. So my first question is that what is basically the right time to apply for these scholarship? Like now, I will be in ninth semester, and then there will be the internship. So uh, when should I start mailing to the professors for like a scholarship or such sort of work? I, I have a one line answer. When you have your transcripts in your hand, 